Logan, Sarah, Don, welcome back from your break. Thanks. Logan, I've noticed you put your name on the board, so you have something you'd like to talk about. What, what went on during your break? Yeah, uh, I went to I went to the beach just outside of Miami with um, with some friends and uh, and my family was there as well, but we stayed at like a different place because they knew I was you know, I would be out or whatever. And um, I don't know, it's been tough. I told you guys a couple of weeks back, but it's been tough since my mom is back dating again. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's weird because I'm, since I'm like actively pursuing relationships, it's, it's odd that she's doing the same thing. I don't know why, it, like it probably shouldn't be weird, but just, I don't know, it kind of is. But anyway, so uh, yeah, we were there at the beach and we went and ate at like two different places. I went with some people that I met on the beach and she went, you know, with, with uh, with my siblings or whatever, the rest of my family that was there, it was like some cousins and stuff. So they went to a different place. And, well, it ends up like I'm at a, I'm at this bar, like pretty close to the beach, and I see my mom there, which was, you know, it wouldn't really be that big of a deal, just seeing her out, I guess. But seeing her like hit on people, watching her hit on people, is just, I don't know. I guess it was something that I wasn't really ready for, because I mean, if you picture like I'm out there and I'm talking to girls, and then she's out there and she's talking to guys and I swear some of the guys were like pretty close to my age, probably like too close to my age. So it was just kind of awkward. And I guess it's, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of frustrating to me because my dad, you could call him a sad sack or whatever, but my dad is kind of like, he hasn't really moved on or whatever. So he's still, I mean, he still loves my, my mom when they split up, but she just kind of, I don't know. She moved on so quickly, so it's just weird. And, I don't know, it was kind of a, I thought it was going to be more of a fun break than it was. That happened like pretty early on in the week, and it kind of, I don't know, just kind of put a damper on the week, I guess. You know, in the, in the last session that we spoke about how we really wanted to try to convey your feelings to her, have you, have you tried to reach out in that way to her? Uh, I mean, I got angry with it, but that's not, like, I mean, that wasn't really the, the best way to do it. Like, I just, I said something to her, I pulled her aside while we were at the bar, and I said something to her, and then I just left because probably ruin her night as well because we were you know we fought for like the next two days or something like that but I didn't know how else to really say it I guess uh, just kind of came out oh, well, Logan I appreciate you sharing that with us Dawn um well uh, you know like I told y'all last week that I lived with my uncle up until I came here to college and he's a nurse and he just, of course, whenever I went home, he questioned me the whole time, making sure, you know, you know, I'm staying on track and everything and it's just really annoying because I get drilled with questions every time I come home and then my mom, I hadn't seen her in a while. And so whenever I go over to see her, she was high on drugs once again. And so I was just ready to come back. I, I didn't enjoy my spring break at all. Understandable. I can imagine how much pressure that puts on you. Yeah, it's, it's really frustrating. Thank you for sharing. Sarah? So I went with some friends to Branson for a couple of days, and that was really fun. But then, um, and I kind of did like Dawn and I went back home to visit family and um, I saw Megan, my sister, and my mom. Um, and she, it was kind of the same situation, like they just always are so worried about me and about everything that I feel like I, all of my independence is taken away when I go back and they just ask questions all the time. And my mom is starting to be, um, super paranoid about Megan following my footsteps and so my mom is like constantly talking about eating disorders and Megan's weight and Megan's calorie intake and it's just so obnoxious because I just it's just frustrating and so I was ready to get back I came back a couple of days early because I just couldn't be around it anymore so I'm talking about your Branson trip I know we've discussed previously on about how you deal with that in social situations where food's involved. How did that go this week? Um, it was okay. I just, uh, you know, I just ordered, I would order something like a salad or something and then uh, just kind of 
pick at it, so it wasn't too bad with, I mean, I don't think anybody, any of the people that I was with, like, noticed it very much. I just, you know, because I have something in front of me, and I eat a couple bites, and so, um, you know, which is more than I could have said in the past. You know, I wouldn't even order anything back in high school, so. Good. It's nice to see some progress. All right, guys. Well, this week, we're going to try something a little bit different. What this is called, as you can see, you have some canvases set up on these on the front of you. I'm going to set this up prior to class. And what we're going to do today is called expressive art. And so what we have here is just a normal box. But inside this box is a key that unlocks a door. And behind that door is an event, a person, or a place, even a thing that has made a big impact on your life. And now that impact could be positive or it could be negative. But what I'd like for you guys to do is pass this around and just think about, think about that key and what would be behind the door that that key would unlock. And I'd like for you to draw that. And once we were finished drawing, We'll go around and we'll talk about what we've drawn. She wants to draw the, what the event is or what is on the other side. It's any. It could be the event. It can be a person, place, thing. It's something that whenever you come, whenever you pass this box around, whenever you hold it and say the key inside, what what's going to be behind that door for you? And there's there's no right or wrong answer. It's going to be different for each and every one. It's just going to be a very specific thing to you that's made a huge impact on your life and has shaped your life and helped make you into the person that you are today. And that can be a positive or a negative. So feel free to take your time. We're going to take about 10 to 15 minutes and we'll discuss afterwards. If you have any questions or need any help, please let me know. And while you're drawing, I'll kind of float around the room, and that's okay. Just check everything out. I can get that for you. Sure. Yeah. Can do that. It's almost sticky. Super sticky. What beach did you go to? Uh, it was Gulf Shores in Alabama. Brought up your sister Megan a lot, Sarah. What what type of role do you think that she's played in your life, especially with what she's been experiencing lately? Well, I mean, she's a friend. We're friends, but it's. I mean, 
mean, she's not, I wouldn't say she's my best friend just because she's younger. Right. So, of course. Um, so I feel like I need to always be perfect for her so that she makes better choices than I have. And, um, and I don't really want her to know the true struggles that I have because, you know, because I don't want her to have to deal with that because she's already been through enough with her dad dying and all that. So, I mean, we're friends, but I don't really share everything with her. So. Yeah. Do you think that it's possible that she can be a social support for you? Maybe, I just, like I said, I just don't like to share with her everything that's going on because I'm, I don't want her to have to deal with the extra um, problems. You don't want her to feel responsible. Right, right. And she's younger, so it may be different if we were the same age or if she were older, but with her being younger, I, you know, I just kind of want her to be able to enjoy her. And whenever you were Megan's age, if you had a support like she has in you now, do you think that that would have benefited you? Yeah, um, it would have helped. I don't know that the big things would have changed much, but it would have. Um, probably would have been beneficial, you know. Um, I think it'd be easier to deal with problems when you have, you know, a solid family that lives together and supports each other. And, you know, I never had that, so. Do you think that that played a very big girl when, when how you dealt with your disorder? Non, do you think that you can relate to that? Um, well, my uncle, he's pretty much the only one that's really there for me trying to help me. But um, like Sarah was saying, you know, we're drilled with questions every time we come home and stuff, and it's just really annoying trying to you know, focus on my goals and um, everybody else is still bringing up the past. And uh, I just wanna move on and focus on my goals, but um, it seems like everybody keeps dragging me back to um, my faults. I mean, I, I have two of her brothers, you know, and they just, you know, she has someone that's looking up to her, but I have two older brothers that just don't understand what I'm going through. They just kind of look at it as I'm throwing a pity party, you know, um, the youngest child needs attention again, you know, and it's just, um, I'd just rather stay away. And Logan, that almost sounds like something that you can relate to with your relationship with your mother. Yeah, I, I think the main issue for me is I just don't really have anybody to to bring that up to because, I mean, I have siblings, but my sister lives away and my brother's younger and I don't really want to, kind of like what, um, what Sarah said, I don't really want to burden him with that, but I don't know, I guess it's it's just difficult because like how do you bring that up to somebody that you're that doesn't even sound like a real problem like I'm struggling with my mom dating I should be supportive you know but I don't really know I guess who to go to with, with those kind of issues how has she been with you and what you've experienced with your eating disorder and how does she feel about you coming to, to group therapy I think she's supportive of it it's, but I think she does take a little bit of, of the blame even though I don't know stem from our relationship, I don't know, but I think she definitely feels a little bit guilty, so I think maybe she would be more supportive if she didn't feel that way, if 
she knew it was something that was out of her control, but she kind of internalizes things and puts more on herself than what she should. So do you think that she's potentially seeking out some some support for herself? No, I, I mean, I think she's fine. She, like she, I think it's more like she just wants what's best for us, you know, that sort of thing. I don't think it's, it's not like a, like a debilitating issue for her. She's still running her life, obviously. You know, she's, she's fine right now. She just wants what's best for, for me. I still talk to him usually, uh, at least weekly. Um, but you know, once again, I don't want to like pick sides or anything. You know, like I'm still, my mom is still supportive of me. I don't want to you know, run to my dad and be like, "Mom's doing this." Like that's kind of childish. You know, like a kid that has their like one parent that the parent says no, and then they ask the other parent to see what they say. It kind of seems like that kind of issue to me. If I was just to run to my dad and say, like, I'm not okay with mom dating. Well, he's probably not either, but it's not really up to either of us. It's very mature and responsible of you, Logan. Are you going to feel the same whenever he starts dating? I, mean, I don't know. I'm not going to say he won't, but, like, he was, it hasn't been that long, you know, since they, well, I guess it hasn't, but, like, how, if you really love somebody, then, how long, did, how long does it take to get over, you know? I mean, what if he never dates again? What if he was like, that was my wife, and he just goes on about his life living, just taking care of his kids, you know, I don't know. I get it from points. This is something that we've talked about throughout, throughout our sessions. There's no right or wrong answers with the test. There's no right or wrong answers. So all this is is, is what it means to you. So I wonder about this is horrible as well. If you would like to start over, I would be happy to get you another canvas. But just know there is no right or wrong answers. Considering my abstract art because it doesn't make any sense. If somebody was to look at it, they wouldn't understand it probably. So. There's the key that we're all going to go around and we're going to try to go into detail and, and talk about it. We'll see. Uh, up so we can just talk it over a little bit with each other.
Sarah, I think you guys can keep going. I want to take a look at Dawn's and kind of just discuss it over with her, okay? All right. Dawn, I'll basically see that you have a, a Red Bull here. Yeah, and, I tried. And, and so, throughout our sessions, it appears that, you know, college has definitely made a huge impact on you. I mean, you're, you're looking into getting into a sorority, and so that means a lot of importance to you. So, is that the direction that you're going with this? Yeah, um, I, I drew A State because I feel like um, this is like a new beginning for me. It's a, a fresh opportunity. Um, I feel like I have some sort of control of my life. And um, I don't have people um, questioning me all the time. I'm more independent. And I just feel like A State in itself and me coming to college has really impacted my life, like you said, for the better. Don, I, I really appreciate that. What's so important and stands out to me is that instead of looking at a past perspective, you're looking at the present and the future and how, you're, how it's such a positive impact in your life. So that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Sarah. So tell me what you've got here. Well, that's the wreck that my dad died in a couple of years ago. And so um, obviously mine's a lot different than Dawn's because mine was a really negative experience. Percent, but, um, and please don't judge because I'm not an artist by any means. But, um, he was driving at night and he uh, crashed into a tree and so and it was um, I was not on the scene but um, my mom went up there when she got the call from the paramedics and she said that it was extremely um, it was really bad it was really gory and you know and so and this right here is just this is the dividing line between before and after my life is completely different before the accident and after the accident. And so it'll always be, you know, the event in my life. So at, at what point in time did this event happen? Um, it was the summer before my senior year of high school. So the room is relatively still fresh, mm -hmm. still fresh. So yeah. do you feel like you've grown at all since that time? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm working on it getting a little bit better so um you know I mean we've talked about it before it got a lot worse right after and since then since the inpatient stay and all of that it's got I mean I'm, I'm I'm trying you know I'm getting a little bit better but it's still hard and his anniversary is coming up in the next couple of months so we'll, we'll all be here for you during that time thank you so much for sharing Logan this is comical. It doesn't even look like what I wanted it to look like, but... That's okay. That's okay. I'll still try to explain it to you. It's, um... That's my shoulder. After my, or, you know, with my injury. Mm -hmm. There's my yep. arm and my fingers. And this is a fire, because it was, like, burning. Burn. Yeah. And, um... I don't know. It, this The water is... Reminds me of when I was swimming, when I was a swimmer. Mm -hmm. But I kind of wanted it to trail off, like a or like a river or something, because I feel like that me that identity is going away, and I don't know what's next because I don't. It's not like I, that was my thing, right. and now. something that was like a real 
possibility, and now it's now I'm like a college student, but that's you know that's everybody. So if you can't distinguish yourself from other people, then you're not an individual. It's an interesting way to look at that. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes. Um, just to recap what we've done today, we've done an expressive art session to kind of outline some events that have taken place in our lives that have had significant impact on us and kind of talk through that. So before we close this session, is there anything else that you guys have on your mind? Well, thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye.